Saba Saba ni National Holiday. Kod's tough talk on national dialogue in Tononoka as national rallies kick off. Satao might still be alive today if he was given the presidential protection. Two elephants, two presidents. Jumbo's killing puts Uhuru's conservation legacy up against his father's. 144-63-54. And back to his best, David Radisha wins at the IAAF Diamond League. KTN Weekend Prime with Yvonne Okwara. Good evening and welcome to our bulletin tonight. It's the 15th of June 2004, the start of yet another week. Now it started off in Migori and had a great showing in Tononoka today. That is the focus of our discussions, drawing parallels between Saba Saba, July 1990, and what is happening today. That is the focus of Checkpoint and we will have veteran, Saba Saba veteran Koegi Waumere to tell us more about what happened then and whether it is the same situation that persists today as well as Martin Olo lawyer and Edwin Sifuna as well to just put some perspective to what is going on in the country please use the hashtag checkpoint on Twitter you can also get in touch with us on SMS that's 22155 tonight we're asking is Cord misusing the Saba Saba magic all of this in our discussion in just a moment from now and we're also going to update you with what transpired in Tononoka earlier today that's a little bit later but let's start off with the sad case of the passing of Satao. Now, if widespread poaching broke the innocence of Kenyans on the threat that our wildlife faces, then the killing of Satao, arguably one of the world's largest elephants whose tusks almost touch the ground, ought to bring Kenyans face to face with the threat of the extinction of elephants with Satao's gene. But the killing of the tusker by poachers mirrors the life of another elephant like him, one whose fate was very different from Satao's. That elephant's name was Ahmed. Tonight, Rita Tinina has the tale of two presidents two elephants and two pairs of rare tusks, one pair that is now in the hands of poachers and another that is safe for posterity. To conservationists and animal lovers, the killing of Satao is perhaps the biggest blow to conservation efforts in recent times. Satao was famous for his big tusks that almost touched the ground. Satao was probably the biggest tusker in the world. Now his tusks are in the hands of poachers who kill the elephant estimated to be about 50 years old. Conservationists argue it didn't have to end that way. The country is battling a poaching menace just as it did in the 1970s. Then there was another elephant just like Satao, Ahmed. Due to his long tusks, Ahmed became a prime target for poachers. The then president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, did not let poachers get to him. In 1970, he declared Ahmed a national treasure. 24-7, day and night, he was guarded by rangers. For four years, wherever Ahmed roamed, two rangers were in tow until he died of natural causes in 1974, aged about 50 years old. Following his death, Jomo Kenyatta issued a decree that remains of the legendary elephant be preserved. For future generations to learn what poaching can do and what we lose when elephants are killed and how um, such a unique animal if it was killed uh, you will not see the task at the national museums of kenya a life-sized look-alike fiberglass model of ahmed stands but that is not all at the main display hall ahmed's real skeleton complete with his real tusks are on display for decades after he died. Satao might still be alive today if he was given the presidential protection that President Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, gave to Ahmed back in the 1970s. Conservationist Dr. Paul Lakahumbu wants President Huru Kenyatta to borrow a leaf from his late father on matters elephant conservation. I think that it's reached a situation in this country where President Uhuru Kenyatta should reflect on what his father did and replicate it and give presidential protection, order a decree 
make them national treasures. All the remaining big tuskers, they're not that many. It is estimated that the country still has at least a dozen big tuskers, and conservationists argue it is possible to give them extra protection, just like was given to Ahmed. 24 men armed security to protect those remaining 12 elephants. That's all it will take. I'm pretty sure we can do it. Experts say the big tusks only occur in Kenya. Decades ago, the big tusk gene was common. Now, fewer and fewer elephants are lucky to grow their tusks, like Ahmed and Satao. If you go to Queen Elizabeth National Park in, Tan in Uganda, or if you go to Addo National Park in South Africa, you'll find herds and herds of elephants without any tusks at all. The genes for tusks have disappeared. They've been eliminated by poachers. It would be such a tragedy if that happened here in Kenya. Four decades later, Ahmed not only stands as an iconic figure in the fight against poaching, he is perhaps a reminder of what the country's wildlife watchdog can do to save the remaining big tuskers before the rare gene is wiped out by poachers. Rita Tinina, KTN, Nairobi. Residents of Kieni constituency have given the Inspector General of Police, David Kimayo, a two-week ultimatum to transfer the area police bosses. This is after one teacher was shot and killed as he returned home from work. The teachers say five tutors have been killed since last year in similar circumstances, with little being done. Kieni MP Kanini Kega and the area NUT Executive Secretary Mutahi Kahiga now want Kimayo to remove those police officers who are deemed to be incompetent in order to enhance security in the area. The two were speaking at the funeral of Bernard Mwaniki, who was a teacher at Lachuka Primary School. We as the teachers of Nyeri would want to state and say that if in two weeks nothing has been done, uh, we will take some action. Had one, one zebra or a buffalo or even a rhino been killed in that sorry lunch, three quarters of us would be in jail today. As we are speaking, nobody is in jail. Hata ka hapa kieni, sisi kieni tzio wale watu ambao watakuwa analetewa wale watu ambao hawafanyi kazi. Kwa hivyo, mimi, eh, na tutasema, tunawapatia siku kumi na inde. Tunapatia kemayo siku kumi na inde, tunapatia kavuru siku kumi na inde, waudoe OCS na wale maafisa ambao wamezembea katika kazi hii. Manake wako, ni vibaya sana kuto ajibika. Unasikia mtu wako na buduki na muna muashilia anaenda. Sasa labda ame, ata, ata wameua watu wengine. Hatujui. Let's focus on some politics. Now, up until Raila Odinga returned to Kenya demanding national dialogue, the president and his deputy had taken a back seat politically. But will it cost the Jubilee doers some mileage on the political front? Asha Mwilu has that report. There's no doubt that when opposition leader Raila Odinga held his homecoming rally here at Uhuru Park exactly two weeks ago, the entire political climate shifted. The crowd that prowled across his grounds carried with it a euphoria confirming to Raila Odinga supporters that the veteran politician was still in the game. And that was just a homecoming rally. That is, up until Raila Odinga uttered these words. Siku ya saba saba baka tuketi chini sisi kama wa Kenya ya kwanza kuzumuza tu ya sida yetu. Apart from setting the political agenda, Raila's call for national dialogue put Jubilee stalwarts on their defense. Akapatua nusu mkate. Na akapakiwa siyagi na bluebird. Lakini hakutosheka. You will not threaten this government. You will not threaten the president. You will not threaten the Jubilee coalition. I, you know, I look at Raila. He's sitting next to Orengo, a very tough lawyer. He's sitting next to Watangula, a very prominent lawyer. Sasa, how attack with advice? Raila is an enemy, is a kind of guy you have to be completely awake. Political scientist Mutahi Nguni says this political move by Raila has caught the Jubilee duo off guard. The only reason why uh, Raila is doing this is uh, as a political bully. He is realized that these two guys are bully. And uh, because they, they are politically bully and he can toss them around, 
he can actually call for national dialogue and the country is held at a standstill. So the problem in my view, if I may emphasize again, is not Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga is perfectly doing his politics beautifully. The problem is the president and his deputy have neglected their responsibilities, political responsibilities. Mutahi reads a lot more into this national dialogue strategy. He says Raila's demand for a meeting between five representatives of either side to steer the dialogue has an eerie air of nostalgia. It's replicating exactly what the Kofi Annan talks, the national dialogue talks were. Remember even the Kofi Annan uh, reconciliation discussions, they had, I think they had five and five. He's replicating the same thing. And the intention, in my own view, is to say that I give you the opportunity to do it this way in times of peace. Or I'll precipitate such a big crisis that when the time comes, you'll be forced to come round the table with your five guys and my five guys because I have already given you the formula up front. With a series of countrywide rallies, Cod has launched its offensive to stir political circles before campaigns for the 2017 poll begin. Within the next 21 days, the run-up to Sabasaba Day could see President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy get back into politics mode. Ashamwilu, KTN, Nairobi. And staying with matters, Tononoka court leader Raila Odinga has restated that he will declare July 7th a public holiday if the government does not agree to a national dialogue. The former prime minister argued he was within his rights to make that declaration amid cheers from a charged crowd in Mombasa. Several court leaders also tore into Interior Secretary Joseph Olelenku for threatening to arrest Raila and warned President Uhuru Kenyatta of unspecified consequences if he refuses to engage the opposition at a round table. KTN's senior coast reporter Ferdinand Domondi now brings us this report from Tononoka. It was one of the biggest crowds to ever convene at the Tononoka grounds as court brought its push for national dialogue to Mombasa. And as is custom of a political rally, speakers took the stage to remind the public of the ills allegedly committed by the government. While you are away, boom, boom, kill a ball. Please remove the corrupt police officers from Mombasa. Mikoa sita na nusu, ikapikia Raila Kura. Wezi wakapita mlango wa nyuma. Na mkoa moja na nusu wakatangazo wa shindi. Absent though was any sign that this was a consultative meeting as it had been sold by court members save for a few speakers from the crowd. Court has been agitating for national dialogue to discuss matters the coalition feels is dragging the country to its knees including alleged tribalism in government, corruption, insecurity, disbandment of the IEBC and distribution of the national cake. Dere ya umaskini, tulionayo, ni kubwa. Kuliko hiya shimolini latewa. Tribalism is what we call in medicine the inseparable Siamese twin of economic injustice. Usaya sura ya kwanza, mustari wa kuminanane. Njooni, tusemezane. Hata kama unadambi mingi sana, dambi zako zitapunguka. The government has however expressed concern about court's intentions and accused its party leader of treason for declaring Saba Saba a public holiday. Interior CS Joseph Olelenku had warned Raila to tone down or risk arrest, but court MPs have reacted by tearing into Lenku. There is no way a cook from Utali can tell Baba that he has crossed the line. <laughs> Well, I do a cassia chapati na mahamuri.
watu wanakufa hapa kila siku badala ya kutatua sida yao hapa anaingilia mambo ya siasa Raila defended his statement saying he was within his rights to call for a national job boycott if the government doesn't play ball Bea sukari iko juu Bea soda iko juu Kodi ya nyumba iko juu Naul naul ya, ya kusafiri iko juu Sasa punda imechoka Tarehe hii ya saba saba hata Moi alijaribu kutisha viongozi wakati ule Moi aliweza kweli Tafadhali mtuletee kwa Senate mswada wa impeachment nataka mnipatie uhuru nimuulize maswali ni mchenge ni mchenge kume ni mbaya the father challenged president huru kenyatta to stop what they perceived as arrogance in the face of criticism called is adamant that the national rallies will continue building up to saba saba in a series of unspecified confrontations until the government sits down to talk sasa nimesema ukikata saba saba ni national holiday uhuru must The entire message had a bottom line, agree to sit down and talk or face unspecified consequences. That is the focus of our discussion on Checkpoint coming up in just a short moment. So keep your comments coming in. Our SMS number is 22155 on check on, on rather on Twitter. We're using the hashtag Checkpoint. So do send in your comments on that and we will share them with our panel right after this story and let's move over now to neighboring South Sudan where aid agencies are warning that starvation and diseases like malaria and cholera are set to intensify South Sudan's humanitarian crisis which has been devastated by six months of conflict. War in the young nation has already killed thousands and forced more than 1.5 million people from their homes and aid agencies are warning of the risk of famine should the fighting continue. President Salva Kiir and his arch rival Riek Machar committed themselves again this week to a ceasefire. Although many analysts are skeptical, they really want a negotiated end to the conflict and instead believe a military victory is still possible. Fighting broke out on the 15th of December, pitting government troops against militia forces loosely loyal to Machar. The violence has taken on a complex ethnic dimension with the Dinka people of Kir fighting the Nuer Machar's tribe. Right, now, watching the World Cup these first few days has been exciting to say the least. From that fantastic goal by Robin Van Persie to Costa Rica's upset of Africa's least favoured team from 2010, Uruguay, there already are moments to remember from Brazil. But what's it like getting from one game venue to another? Our senior sports reporter Hassan Juma is in Sao Paulo and lets us in on his experience. Well, Nairobi, with a population of about 4 million people, grapples with the issue of traffic jam. Here in Sao Paulo, which has a population of about 12 million people, has managed to solve that issue by introducing efficient buses and electronic trains. Here is a report I prepared earlier. During international matches pitting national soccer team Harambe Stars and, say, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, the human traffic is usually unbearable. And getting to Moy Sports Center Kasorani, which should take less than half an hour, takes hours. Brazil is a soccer crazy nation, and as the 2014 World Cup hosts, millions of people crisscross the city at the same time. However, there is order. Sao Paulo Stadium was the venue of the opening match between the hosts Brazil and Croatia. It is about 70 kilometers away from the town of Republica by train. Their trains are underground trains and as you descend, you marvel at the nice work of art. 4.5 million people use these trains every day. And the local government then pockets about three years per person from the 4.5 million commuters every day. First things first, there's a map for visitors. Once you have decided where you want to go, in our case, it's Corinthians Itakera. Then you make your payments.
The tonic train is one of the fastest modes of transport here. And along the way, you appreciate nature as well as the vast beauty that Brazil has to offer. Although you have to be careful not to pass your destination. In the train, there are designated seats for old women, the old, pregnant and sickly. On the door, the towns that the train will pass are visible with an indicator where the train is and where it's heading. Just as matter to speak and draw passengers, so is the case here. In 24 minutes time, we approach our destination, Sao Paulo Stadium as we pack our bags and disembark. Well, after about 25 minutes, we get to our destination, Corinthians Itakera, and on my right is where the opening match between the host Brazil and Croatia was being played, Sao Paulo Stadium. Hassan Juma, KTN, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Right, from Hassan Juma, who's quite happy to be in Sao Paulo, as anyone would be, World Cup 2014. Let's now move to our discussion of the day today on Checkpoint. We're taking a look at the parallels drawn between the situation now and Saba Saba as Cord gears up towards July the 7th. That is what we are discussing. The hashtag on Twitter, Checkpoint, on SMS 22155. Checkpoint begins right now. Right, so here's who we have with, our dis with us for our discussion tonight. Uh, let's start off with Edwin Sifuna, who's an advocate of the High Court. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Martin Olo, who's also an advocate and a political analyst. And Koigi Oamwere, who uh, many would remember is, shall we say, a Saba Saba veteran. And who is the best place person who was there then and to tell us whether that situation persists today and to just give us some perspective and some history on this. And I'll start with you, Koigi. Does the situation now warrant the calls for Saba Saba? A lot of parallels are being drawn between now and then. Cord is saying Saba Saba is the big day that's coming up, even declaring it a national holiday. You were there in 1990. Is the situation the same now as it is as it was then? I think one can say that uh, in some respects, some things have stayed the same. Uh, but there is no doubt that uh, the situation is not comparable with the situation that we had then because at the time when we had Saba Saba the opposition had just not been had been disallowed from uh, having its its uh, rally at Kamkunji uh, there we didn't have more than one party it was just one party dictatorship uh, the free you know many people had been locked up already and uh, clearly, um, we, we, we were struggling against a one-party dictatorship that was cruel and determined to keep power at whatever cost. On the other hand, we understood clearly that what we needed for our salvation was democratic rights, was democracy. Democracy that we could use for purposes of changing the system, changing the leadership, and moving the country forward. Today, you would say that uh, although we have quite a, a lot of shortcomings, uh, we are not where we were then. Uh, the opposition can be, can be in the media, we can be where we are now. Uh, at that time it was not possible. You can have somebody appear on, the, on page one in the mm -hmm. newspaper with a bigger picture than the president. In uh -huh. those days it would not have been Absolutely. possible. Uh, you could have as big rallies as we are seeing all over the country without the police interfering or trying to stop them. And so, so the question is, do you think qu they're misusing um, I think the Saba Saba magic and feeling and momentum? That is what I, that's what I feel. I, I, but the trouble is, I don't know exactly what is the game plan for the opposition. Okay. Uh, we have been told that on that day, uh, Raila will liberate, uh, uh, we will liberate us completely. How he is going to do it? How, what is he going to use to effect right. that liberation? Edwin, I think that we are abusing 
the the occasion of Saba Saba because it's it, it cannot possibly be used to resolve the problems that we have today. Edwin, is there a game plan? As Koege is saying, there doesn't seem to be one. Well, Yvonne, first let me say that uh, it is quite an honor for me to meet uh, Honorable Koigi and uh, to tell him personally that he's a hero of mine, that uh, we enjoy the freedoms that we do because of the struggle that uh, people and him have put into this country. But I'm sure he will understand my confusion when on this day he's telling uh, the country that uh, the methods or uh, apparatus that were available then to be able to effect change ended with their generation as if uh, he when we were agitating for the second liberation of the country, we had a social contract that said the, uh, that uh, protests and uh, uh, any other form of uh, mass action is restricted only to the movement that uh, the generation of Koegi was involved in. Because I do not think that we have any contract in this country that says that certain modes of effecting change were only available to Koegi's generation and only then for the purposes of so, uh, sourcing a new constitution. And if that were the case, Yvonne, once we got this new constitution, then the constitution would have provided that, yes, this is the path that we took to get here. But now that we are here, these forms of protest and uh, all these other forms of agitation are no longer uh, needed in the country. But the constitution has those provisions. In fact, in Koigi's era, it was not a constitutional right for you to protest. Right now, under 30, uh, Article 37, it is actually the constitution that give us, gives every Kenyan the right to protest, the, uh, the right to assemble peacefully and unarmed, the right to associate. And this is what uh, the opposition is calling for okay. on Saba Saba. Understood. Mm. What is the game plan mm. come July the 7th? Mm. Well, according to what uh, the Honorable Raila Odinga has said, is that uh, the people are supreme. And on uh, Saba Saba, whatever it is the people decide to do, it is not for me to second guess. Because you will see that the Constitution, the very first article of the Constitution, recognizes that the supreme power in this country is the people. And if they decide to exercise their sovereignty, they can do it directly on that day or through the elected representatives. So it is not for us to sit here and say what the people will do. Mm. Mm. Can I? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, very, very, very quickly. quickly, and then we bring in Martin. I would yes. just say that... Um, uh, of course you are right that uh, whatever methods that were used then, some could still apply today. But there are also some methods that were used then <coughs> that would not be fair to try and replicate today. For instance, some of us had to, were driven into exile. Yes. Uh, I don't think that today the need for exile uh, is as is, is, is what it was. But that was the government days. doing that. It wasn't the correct, people. Correct, correct, yes. correct. There are some people who have called for mass action. Yes. Raila himself has said we don't need to stick to the constitution or to the laws because the people are sovereign. And yes, they are. But supposing the people decide to go, uh, to go fighting, supposing they decided to apply violence, what will the leadership do? try and stop the people, guide them uh, in order to make sure that uh, they, 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 their action results in something positive? Or do we just take refuge in the fact that the people are sovereign well, and let them go killing one another in the street? Already we have had 2007, 2008 experience yes. of electoral violence. Okay. Yes. Do we really want a repeat on this? I'd like to bring in this Martin. This is the question that I'm asking. I'd like to bring mm. in Martin on law mm. right now. People saying that he should actually follow the legitimate means, but some say if he was to go through Parliament, there's already this now infamous phrase, the tyranny of numbers, and that Raila seems to have, um, you know, mm. refused to accept the election outcome and the Supreme Court uh, result. Is this a means to getting power, or do Kenyans have valid concerns that need to be addressed in this way? I, I think that uh, we, we are living in interesting times. Um, and again, let me put it in perspective. I was reminding uh, Honorable uh, Koigi that the first time I met him was 1982, and uh, it was Kakamega, and he had come to address us uh, students that time and uh, that time he was considered a very big rebel uh, and before when we had gathered 
to listen to him. Uh, to Loris of um, Ascaris Geman dispersed him. Now, that is, I think, a perfect place to begin. That we've come a long way. We've uh, agitated for uh, a, a more enabling constitution. And now we have one constitution, my uh, uh, landed friend uh, Edwin. And the one thing that, you, that we do not want to do is to mislead Kenyans. I've, I've seen code use the term sovereignty fairly liberally, as if the constitution itself does not actually define a sovereignty and proceeds to donate that sovereignty to the judiciary, to the legislature, and to the executive. And the executive are two levels at the national level and at the county level. So when you talk about the sovereignty of the people of this country, there is ways in which the constitution has anticipated how that sovereignty is going to be used and has actually expressed itself and we've seen it happen. When elections were held in 2013, the people were expressing themselves. Now when they put in this government, the people made a commitment that they needed to live with this government, knowing very well that it would be five years. Uh -huh. Now. Whether the, people, the times are difficult, and I'm not saying they're not, they're difficult. Whether insecurity is high, and we all agree it's high, there is no enough reason to argue that this government must go. That argument, in terms of constitutional terms, can only be made according to how the Edwin? constitution stipulates it. Well, and therefore, for anybody to come up at this stage and begin to say that by the time we get to Sabasaba, we will not know what will happen. Ivona, I, think surely the, I think one thing I need reckless. to correct my learned friend, it is not the constitution that donates these powers to the uh, judiciary or to the executive. I, this said is power, I said sovereignty is donated. It's not donated, by, donated the by the constitution. It's not by the constitution, it's by the people. You know, you know, it is the people who donate these powers. No, Yvonne, exercise Yvonne, this power on our behalf. The uh, only and, instrument right. we have where we what? have everything dis defined uh -huh. as a lawyer is in the constitution. Do not okay. tell me anything else. That's right. it. No, that is precisely that is what I'm going to rely on. The, the very streets. first article of the Constitution recognizes that the sovereignty exists and it resides in the people and that they might exercise their sovereignty directly or through their elected representative. Mm -hmm. That presupposes that there will be a time when we have the people and their elected representatives and we can choose to ignore our elected representatives and exercise that then. We are being told directly. that, code, that, that they are preparing what, us for No, anarchy. no, no. That yeah. is not what yeah, code yeah. is saying. That I is what the Constitution says. I think uh -huh. we should and I, I just, one I thing I need to clarify. Okay. The leadership has been very clear that they recognize that the Jubilee uh, Coalition has a five-year contract with people. Raila Odinga himself has been very clear on that. So this is Nobody not about is, no, no, ascending no, no, no. to power. Nobody is saying we need to overturn the, uh, the country. In fact, it was very clear and say, if you want to overthrow a, a government, you don't uh, call for dialogue. What right. he has said is that people need to sit down and there are problems that have been identified. There is nothing wrong with sitting down and talking. No, but uh, let me say this. Actually, I wish, because I'm a supporter of dialogue, I wish I could believe that this, what is being called for by code, is a genuine national dialogue. In my view, it's not national because you can see on, the, the, only, the only party code wants to talk to is first and foremost. Uh, jubilee. That is not true. What they are going to talk about, I, 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 I get the feeling that even the so-called dialogue, there will be no dialogue. I think what the code intends to do is to get uh, uh, President Uhuru and his deputy and read to them the surrender terms. Tell them we, are, we want government and we want you to surrender on these terms. I, and, I just have and, a question and let me, for you. And let me, Was it let that me, the kind of suspicion that me, you guys were treated No, no, no. With let, me, by let me add something. Uh, you, know, you know, when we say that uh, any, any means is yes. fair yes. In, in seeking change, we are saying that we, we approve the kind of revolutions we have seen uh, called spring uh, revolution. The Arab Spring. Yes. The Arab Spring. Okay. Which have ended up in total destruction of countries like Libya, Iraq, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And nobody and has I'm called for that. No, 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 no. Nobody has called for that. You know, Yvonne, okay. what, okay. what you are doing, Yvonne will have to get this right. One at a moment. What, what are you saying? Okay, Koege what I'm saying, and then yes, what I'm saying is that even uh, sovereignty of the people yes. has limits. If we decided to execute genocide, the whole world will rally against us. Because it is not right okay. that see, you that use that sovereignty. No, 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 no. We are not no, fear. It is not because you because that, that is what you no, 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 no. The point is, is you okay. know now. Okay. Let me check okay. in those terms. Let me check right. in. Anything we that the opposition wants to do 
They are free to come to a it, forum like it, this. You know, this okay. express you know, all right. I'm okay. surprised Martin? that this discussion is coming from Edwin and maybe uh, uh, Cord. <laughs> We've heard the whole argument around the ICC hinged by African leaders, led by Museveni and others, on the issue of sovereignty. Now we are hearing that you can come in the name of sovereignty and it goes mayhem. Okay. Be, be the the All right, let's, let's, move, let's move the discussion forward, gentlemen. Could Jubilee's um, resistance to having national dialogue have precipitated a situation such as we find ourselves in? We've had the back and forth, the, the, the deputy president saying, no, we'll not dialogue. The president says, yes, we will. And then he meets the MPs and says, no, we will not. And then there are conditions and you can come for a cup of tea. Do you think that might have precipitated the situation we find ourselves in today? Yes, I think that is is why we are where we are today because the problem is this Yvonne even this sovereignty that we are talking about we are talking about exercising that sovereignty as far as providing solutions to the problem that Kenyans are facing we're not talking about overthrowing a government we're not talking about any other agenda okay. we are saying that people as a sovereign can sit down and find solutions to problems right. that they okay. face Edwin, and they, uh, they should have been identified let me let me um rephrase this statement or phrase this quote the statement that was made today yes by jacoyo mediwa uhuru must agree to talk he must and if he will not agree to talk we shall force him to agree to talk mm -hmm. um do you see a statement like that as sounding a little bit um well first of all let me, let me, revolutionary i i of course would not agree with the the terms uh, that uh, jacoyo would use but I want you to listen to the leadership of a party. He has said himself... He is part of the leadership of the party. No, 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 no I'm not? talking about the top leadership of a party. If we go to listen to what the lieutenants on the Jubilee side also say, the likes of Kabando Kabando, we are not going to get into that. We are saying what has uh, the leadership of the uh, uh, code called for. They have identified five issues that they think are important to Kenyans, and they are saying let Kenyans sit down and talk. They are not talking about talking to Jubilee alone. They have said they want members of the civil society to sit down. They want representatives of, uh, what are they called, labor unions to sit down and talk, because solutions are not the place of, uh, of one coalition or the other. All right. I'd like to, I'd like to throw in this one, yeah. even as we continue. I know you've said some issues are uh, different or similar to what happened in 1990. Governors of Kiambu, like Kipia and Moranga, have said code is not welcome in their counties. For those that will remember their history, this reminds us of what happened yes. with Bishop Alexander Muge. When he was told not to go into Busia, he went in, had a triumphant, um, you know, welcoming. And we all know what happened when he left Busia. He was told, if you come in, um, you will not leave here alive. And that is indeed what happened. Theories and speculation still continue, but that is believed to have been a work of ill motive. Koigi, do you think then that when we hear statements like these from governors saying, no, you are not welcome here, that that is essentially the same thing as was happening in 1990, that some parts of this country are still unwelcome to certain conversations? Yeah, that's correct. I think that, uh, and it's very unfortunate that anybody would want to stop code from holding their meetings wherever they wish to. But uh, when we come to the question of uh, um, uh, national dialogue, um, in my view, the way the dialogue is being called for uh, is in such a way that it looks like, first of all, the core is not genuine, and what is intended is to provoke the other side to say no to the dialogue. Because it is not, it's not difficult to be respectful when you are calling other people for dialogue. But when you say that if the president doesn't come for this dialogue, we are going to shave him without water. Mm -hmm. You know, you are talking about probably putting him in prison. That's where people are shaved without water <laughs> and have been shaved without water. And I think that this kind of language, instead of assisting what is being called for, and I'm, I'm for dialogue, because I know without dialogue, you can only have war. But when you call people to a dialogue in an insulting manner, what you are actually telling, and we are not nin compose, we are not idiots. We can tell a language that is meant to help bring about something, and a language whose purpose is precisely to stop that, that thing happening. I the agree. way it looks to me is that the code have settled on an, on an agenda of power, and getting that power now, and by whatever means necessary. That is what we are deducing. If God is, thinks uh, something different, let them come on, on, on platform and say it. And I, and I, and I, and I, know, Yvonne, I still stand for the law. I still stand for constitution. If God wants power, if God believes there are issues that need to be dealt with, then they have their manifesto to go back to, and they know Jubilee has a manifesto to go back to. Now, if they want 
this thing solved now, then they also understand that the only me mechanisms that are there are spelled out in the constitution. But want to argue that it doesn't matter, the constitution does not matter. The sovereignty of the people is it's not supreme. given. It's it's supreme. Supreme. But that it is so sure anarchy. And let us be frank, and today we are speaking uh, uh, <laughs> you know, on this debt. If we want to see this country really go up in smoke, let's say so. But those of us who are for the law and the constitution are saying that if you want power, there are mechanisms set out. All right. In allow, the allow me to play the devil's advocate for just one moment because yeah. in 1990, that was the law and that was the constitution, which uh, persons like yourself um, fought you know, very hard against. Yes, fought very hard against. Could that not be the same thing it is that the court is, the same is, thing. is fighting for no, now? But the constitution, they do not agree with the constitution. No, 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 no. But the constitution as it yeah. is. Yeah gives them the freedom to do everything they need to do to effect change in this country. The laws that we have in addition to the constitution also will permit them to bring about change without necessarily resorting to violent See, means. And let the me say this. That I have, the look, at, is that look, look at the fact that we have a free media yes. which allows us to sit here, disagree, and even charge the government with anything we want. Uh, we have a parliament where code is uh, very well represented. We have a Senate. We have political parties. Okay. Uh, do let's, we let's, need let's, to let's, go let's, to the street? The problem, let's have, you, let's you have 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 you to have a question I'm asking is, does code need to this. <laughs> the same side has actually sent a petition to Parliament asking for the disbandment of IBC. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the same uh, party wants to say that let us Okay. But when you see Edwin, 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 let's have an, you in. A, a clear and obvious misunderstanding of the Constitution. I don't know how many times I need to repeat that the Constitution presupposes and uh, 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 anticipates a situation whereby you can do that directly or through no. your elected uh, let's, 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 let's not It is there. Yeah. And, and the, the problem not, that I have let's, is let's okay. it. Let's that is not, Article no, no, no. 1 let's of the Constitution of Kenya. Say, you know, that is what it says. It doesn't say that you can oust the Constitution. No, no, no. It doesn't say you oust. How does it say that you can go directly? The sovereignty of the people can be exercised no, directly. This is, this no. is now I, 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 you let, have a copy let, of uh, let, the Constitution. Let, 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 I, think, I cannot sit Martin? here and hear you okay. misleading Kenyans. Okay. Okay. Martin, the Constitution, let him finish his point. Martin. When you talk about sovereignty, please, yes. let us not talk about okay. what is this direct? Right. Article, Martin, let's article let 1 the is, uh -huh. what is the direct? in black and white. But what's the direct? It says that people have the option of exercising their sovereignty either directly or through their elected representatives. So that instead of sending my elected member of parliament to go and speak to an issue on my behalf, I can actually decide to come to a rally and speak it myself. Mm -hmm. That but is what the Constitution says. But also, says. when okay. we bring in Saba Saba, you see when we bring in Saba Saba, uh -huh. there is also something else that we are saying. Uh, that uh, we can ignore the people's representatives mm -hmm. and invite the people to go and fight for what nobody has said right. that. This yes, nobody yes. has said no, this that. Is, I think we, we, nobody has said that. that. Gentlemen, yeah. I think we need us to move yeah. from this point. Yeah. Oh. And here's a tweet that's coming in from Joel Opondo who says, What were the major reasons for Saba Saba? Have all those reasons been solved? If so, then it is a misuse. If not, do you think everything that we fought for during Saba Saba, and we'll come to you, Kweg, in a moment, Edwin, everything that we fought for, has that come to pass? I do not think that everything that we fought for has come to pass because people fought for an open and democratic society. You don't think that I exists? I do not now? think that we are, we've gotten there yet Explain. because we will never get to a perfect society. Mm -hmm. We are always aspiring, and even the constitution that we have is as a, an aspirational uh, constitution that we want to see ourselves in a certain place at a certain time. If you look at the things that are happening now, why would you say that we live in an open and democratic society when we have people who actually fought for the rights that we have in the constitution telling us that we should not exercise those rights that when you call for a rally somebody says you're raising political temperatures okay allow me to ask a no, very quick question I, even I, as, yes. we, I, as, as we carry on sorry mm -hmm. they talked about this being a consultative forum yes in what way is it consultative? Perhaps is what's happening behind the scenes, but just educate us because they go up to the podium and they speak and of course they rally the crowds and the crowds say yes. In what way is this consultative to the point that we're seeing um, feedback that's being... Uh, well, the way that I understood is mm -hmm. this, that uh, it is becoming increasingly clear that uh, 
uh, the government is not willing to have this particular dialogue. And you see the beauty with dialogue is that you, you can't force somebody to sit down with you and talk. But the fact that Yvonne does not show up to the dialogue does not mean that we as a country cannot talk amongst ourselves. So the consultative forum... But is it talking forum, amongst yes. ourselves or is it um, <laughs> politicians addressing <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, Italian. if you saw the report on Tononoka, there were actually views that were presented by Wananchi themselves. People were given an opportunity to speak to their leaders to what they think their problems are. And the end result is supposed to be a collation of all these issues. And then at the proposed national dialogue, all of these issues will be brought to the table. Because we can't have if, it. You know, Yvonne, if we go on the way we're going, what we are simply saying is this. And I, I like the way Edwin is saying that, that only called people can exercise sovereignty. In other words, no, I did no, not just say a minute. That. Just, sure. to just learn to listen also. Council, I did not just say that. Listen, now I'm coming to you. We haven't made the point. So next time I also raise my people and start arguing and having rallies, those are people. Next time True. TNA are going to raise people and those are people. Those are people. So people. who is going to be an umpire? Where is going to be? Well, there have yeah, been, there have been yeah, so many proposed be umpire. umpire. Even yeah. my no, 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 brother no, no, Musalia Mudova offered to umpire. Well, let us come to, to reality. <laughs> and we haven't seen anarchy that we are, we are advocating for. I have argued on, on various forums that where you talk about national dialogue presupposes you have a constitutional crisis. Where you're talking about uh, national dialogue and, and you're talking about a conference presupposes that you have a military crisis, presupposes that you have a political crisis. Now, constitutional political crisis, if you want to look around, look at South Sudan. Okay. Is there? All right. And people are out in the bush. Can I say something? We are this? not yes. there. Yes, yes. Very quickly as we start yeah. to conclude. I will say that uh, there is no doubt that everything that was uh, sought at the time of Sabah Sabah is not achieved. Mm -hmm. But it's also true that we have parties, parties that we didn't have then. It is true that we don't have our, a dictatorship that is as bad as we had then. It's true that we have freedom of association. We have freedom of assembly. We have a free media. We have many more uh, means of changing government that we did have then. To that extent, even if we are not in Canaan yet, we are closer to River Jordan than we were, we were then. And if we use the wrong means, say, inviting people to the streets, which Saba Saba did because it was desperate, and mass action resort, of course, whatever mass action. So, what that is the followed, threshold? What is the threshold for inviting people to the what street? Are, what is should, the threshold? You should not, that you should not invite right. people to the streets mm -hmm. as long as people can have peaceful rallies, as long as people can have demonstrations that are peaceful, as but long as you can. As long as you can meet at a media house, as we have met now, as long as you, you can, you, you are Isn't in that parliament. Isn't that what's happening at the moment? Is yeah, these, are, these are things that we have now. And that's why we are saying, actually call, uh, trying to ask people to go to the streets, which, which is why Saba Saba is being invoked. It's irresponsible. Okay. Because you are trying to get people to use means <laughs> right. that are, are not... Thank you. Absolutely Gentlemen, necessary today. We're running out of time, so I'd like uh, you, Martin, to have your final comments and then, Edwin, as we close. I, I think basically what I would like to tell Kenyans is that uh, what we are being entertained on is sure a uh, recipe for anarchy. Uh, I don't agree that uh, the issue of sovereignty allows us to whip up emotions and then go out on the streets. Because if God can do that, let us uh, grant it that even the other side will do that. And that's exactly and what there will Kogi be no umpire Twitter, and yes. there will be nobody to hold us uh, mm -hmm. to account. Mm -hmm. We don't want the institutions we have created in the constitution. We are saying that the judiciary is, you know, I mean, we're saying the parliament is, I mean, this is the surest way that I've seen where people who fought for this constitution actually are violating the constitution and are saying whatever they are saying and want to get away with it. So my point would be that we have a country and this country belongs to all of us, uh, Kenyans, and that we also have a responsibility. If anybody wants power, uh -huh. we do have an opportunity to go through the motions. And when we've done it, we accept it. Very quickly. Edwin, as a question. Well, for me, I want people to understand this, that uh, the problems that precipitated the call for national dialogue are not problems for code. It is not as if uh, the tax in uh, code strongholds is 30% uh, and the other regions is 12 it is not as if uh, when somebody throws a grenade in uh, Gikomba, he uses a list uh, that uh, only targets uh, code uh, members. It's not as if corruption only affects the people who come from code strongholds. And the call was that let us sit because we are seeing that this is something that we need to come together as a country and say what are the issues, what are the, the ways that we can go about addressing some of these concerns. 
we have and that to is leave all. It okay, we yeah. have to leave it at that for now. I'm sorry, we're running out of time, gentlemen. I say just something very briefly. Thirty seconds, if yes. you must. Three things. One, I don't believe that uh, code has another agenda for the national dialogue except power. <laughs> but the way they want that power is not through the proper procedure okay. or even. Uh, the other thing is. We, Uhuru is in the house that we want to get into. And while we are entitled to try and get into that house where Uhuru is, we do not need to burn right. the house. Okay, we I, can I think get we need Uhuru to leave it at that for keep now. the house intact. Thank you very much. Um, we need to leave it at that for now. I do need to um, thank my guests for coming and also to recognize the effort that uh, Member of Parliament for Kiminini made. We know he left Mombasa really late and was not able to be part of our panel tonight, but we thank him for making the effort. You cannot see him. He's behind my cameras right now, but we thank him for making the time and uh, as much as possible to make it here and maybe we'll make a point of having him uh, at some point in the course of the week. Thanks for watching. We will carry on with your feedback as we continue with our bulletin. Taking a short break now. This has been Checkpoint. Back after this break. Right. So welcome back to our bulletin. Now, Everybody has the right to change their mind, regardless of what they're changing their mind about. It's still a right, and it turns out many people like exercising this right. This week, Wilson Buru followed the actions of people who changed their minds willingly, others who had to be nudged to do it, and others who imagined kicks and blows would do the trick. All this in this week's edition of Mock the Week. Wilson. Wilson. What? 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 Oh, sorry, man. These World Cup times are taking a real toll on me. I was I'm watching England versus Italy and then Ivory Coast and Japan. Then I have to be up again to watch Bosnia and Argentina. Don't ask me why. It's the World Cup, man. The 24th week of the year. A pivotal week for the country because of this. Yes. A figure with so many zeros, it makes MP salaries look like pocket change. This is the amount of money in Kenya shillings, not Ugandan currency, the government said it was going to use or not to use in the next one year. But we'll get to that in a bit. There's a common saying that if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Let's go back a few weeks when President Uhuru Kenyatta kind of got himself into the kitchen and pretty close to enough to the fire. <laughs> That offer was snapped up by interested parties. And I want to promise Kenyans, but the beauty of this country is there's an allocation in the constitution that grants one the freedom to change your mind. If you have been following the story of these two, it's very intriguing. But let's arise it, shall we? This one said they should talk, this one said fine, but his family came in and said there'll be no talking, so this one agreed to that and that was that. What they didn't know is that Baba was not changing his mind anytime soon. Now, all this back and forth is bound to take a toll on a man's body. That's why it's always important to have a helper around. And after taking a long, well-deserved nap, the shouting match continued. You will not threaten this government. You will not threaten the president. You will not threaten the Jubilee coalition. Meanwhile, is that very important argument which will most certainly 100% affect how much food you're able to put on your table tonight continued, somebody else was being a very bad boy. This guy. You see, his family was not very happy that he was very busy talking excommunication of one of their sisters. The Jubilee Coalition as a family have urged the Honorable Linturi to drop that motion. It turns out 
In the same constitution, right next to the freedom to change your mind, there is the freedom not to change your mind. Yup, he exercised that freedom fully. Until D-Day, that is. If Honorable Nturi is not here, then uh, I think his motion is dead. Speaking of which, This lot in Isiolo County decided the good old days of councillors hurling chairs at each other were exactly that. Good. All right, let's pause this thing right there. Let me explain. They were dead set on impeaching their speaker, but somebody came up with the idea that was seen as being likely to suggest that they should probably somehow, in maybe a very small way, change their mind. Let's just say that did not go down well with everyone. <laughs> There's another very popular saying, you can dress up a goat in a suit, but it's still a goat. This may be the reason why the government wants to build more prisons. And speaking of prisons and prisoners, this fellow decided to imprison himself to his grandfather. In his defense, he was fully utilizing the clause in the constitution that gives one the freedom to climb on top of their grandfather's monuments in the middle of major cities. The problem was, the only guy who could get him to come down was busy being a local tourist. So, they bothered his grandmother, his grandmother for God's sake, to come and beg him to come down. I failed to understand why everybody created such a big fuss about our friend there when all he wanted to do is spend some time with his grandfather. The police admitted that, you know, he did not do anything wrong, so he was not exactly under arrest. But I did pose that question to the police. Why the fuss? And as usual, I got an exclusive statement sent to me personally, and they explained that he was holding the nozzle to his grandfather's gun and they were afraid that if it had gone off, quote, he would have been seriously and or fatally injured, end quote. It is a figure that made the government change its mind about several things. For instance, last year our friend Mr. Rotich here used an iPad to tell us how the government would tax us through our noses. But when you're faced with this... Even an iPad becomes an affordable and hence surplus to requirements. 